All right, so you got the stage that you've painted it. Uh, my advice is to use some enamel. Um, don't use water-based paint, but I mean, if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. So just use what you got. You know, make up a color scheme that you want to use. Um, you can use uh, the carbon, you know, fiber look-alike vinyl or any type of um, vinyl wrap you want to use. I advise against the vinyl wrap myself. Um, and either way, you're still going to have to paint it to get a layer, good layer of paint for the vinyl wrap vinyl wrap to actually stick to anyway um, but I mean just for this demonstration um, I've just given it a couple coats of the undercoat and this here will actually get painted completely in the future but this is just for demonstration to show you as light so you've already covered it if you are using this vinyl wrap um, of course put it on for heat gun if you haven't got a heat gun uh, you've got a nice hot day outside once you put it on put it out in the sun and you'll see this all bubble up and um, then you'll be able to stretch it out and get it and the glue will be hot so it should stick down um, Then you've got your wee holes. So of course you've drilled your holes for your buttons Use a hole saw for them uh, to Drill your holes Okay, so we've got them under here. You see the imprints. So what you do is get your craft knife and just like that cross and cross Let's keep going along the whole lot of them All right, let's see what they were Just press it in and you'll get a because your hands are hot anyway so it's going to slightly stretch it all right let's see there so we've got the little bumps to look at boom boom uh, initially this carbon fiber wrap um you'll hear when i'm doing this it's actually going to be um making cracking noises while it's cracking it's a bit old so if you've actually got fresh stuff it won't be um it'll be a bit easier to work with it won't split on you uh, but as I say, my advice is just use the paint and then you don't have to worry about all this. Um, you know, if you've only got rollers and paintbrushes, do it that way. You know, you're only making it for yourself. And I say, we've just made this out of an old shelf. Well, an old um, Duchess. So you see that here, it's cracking. Of course, uh, what you want to do is to stop that, of course, you heat it up. But this stuff's that old, even heating it up doesn't work that much. It does only a little bit. But, you know, I'll put this in the sun and I'll quickly show you what happens. It all lifts. Um, and then you better stick it all back down with your scraper. If you haven't got a scraper, push all the bubbles right out or something, use your hand or a bit of sponge, anything you can, um, to get all the bubbles out. Alright. Alright, so you see what I mean if you don't use a heat gun and then it goes out in the sun, you're going to get all this sort of thing happening. That's where it's good if you haven't got a heat gun, this is the way that you can get it on. So now you go along with your scraping and get rid of the bubbles. Oh, I'll just do it with my hand quickly just to push them out. Alright. You can push most of them out. Uh, if your vinyl wrap's a bit old, you're going to have a bit of issues. I'm not going off this because it's a bit old. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes to show you anyway. Right, away from that, because some of you won't even be doing the wrap. You'll be just painting, which is what we'll be doing to this one. Alright, next thing you want to do is get the perspex, cut the perspex to the whips that we had here. And then you also want one for your screen. Now you want to be taking a measurement for your screen from in here or on an angle all the way to the top. All right. And that's the measurement you want your screen. And then what you're going to do up the top, right at the top underneath, where the screen comes in, wherever it's going to be. Uh, you can put a board along there and screw it in to hold the screen, or you can just put a screw. All right, next thing up the top, of course, go to the photo place, print you out some, yourself some photos, take some photos of your games off when you're actually playing them, and then go and get them printed on a strip. Or if you've got some magazines with cutouts or whatever, make your own. I mean, I've just taken a couple of cutouts of different stuff here out of some magazines. Just for, uh, as I say, this is only for demonstration. How I just made this all from scratch. So we're going to make yourself something cool. Of course, we're going to have lights in behind there, so that's all going to light up. All right, don't have to use these pictures. These are just, as I say, get some old pictures out of magazines, whatever you want to use. If you want to use cartoons, or if you want to take photos of you actually playing your game, Super Mario or something, and then put some pictures of Super Mario up there and stuff. All right. So now we'll get, all we've got to do now is get the buttons in. So what you want to do is get yourself the... USB joystick, uh, so we're going to be using an old uh, laptop 
Um, so get yourself the USB joystick and the buttons. And of course you'll need the circuit board to plug them into. All right, you can have lots of optional extras. You're not going to need them. It's just for a six button. And then we're going to have the uh, start and select buttons up here. All right, so just go ahead, put whatever colors in. So we're going to go here, bam, 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 bam. Of course the joystick is going to go up under. And it's going to end up poking through the top. And then we're going to be putting the ball on the top of it. Now you don't have to get these clear ones or the LED, these are the LED flashing ones of course. 50% um, of the time they're going to have faults and they don't flash as bright as they should etc. You can wire them separately up to a higher voltage slightly to sometimes that can help make them run better. Or make them run on their own USB 5 volt separate to the other lights so they're getting more amps going through to them. Uh, but of course you don't have to spend this sort of money, these are the dearer ones, made of steel and they've got the LED lights. You can just get the ones that are made of plastic and without LED lights. Um, so if you're looking about, you know, the cheaper versions, 40 bucks, 60 bucks for a kit. Whether these here, you, you know, by the time you've got everything, you're up for uh, 100 and, yeah, 120, 150. So anyway, so you've got all your buttons, get all them in, screw your wee things on underneath them, get them all wired up. And then we'll go to the next stage. We're going to put the screen in. The other thing you're going to do is sit the laptop in here. And of course there's going to be a gap here where the screen's not quite at the sides and the same on there. What we're going to do is cut a strip, make like a, a mini frame out of some custom wood, just some thin 3mm or you know you can do 5mm if you've only got 5mm, just whatever you've got lying around and that's going to close it off. And see if you haven't got that much material to make a whole piece like that, uh, you can just run a strip up that side, strip up that side and then cover in the top. Alrighty. Now remember what I said from the start, of course we wanted to make this out of materials you have at home already uh, to make it, yeah, so you're making one on the cheap so initially if you haven't got, remember I said at the start, you don't have to get these joysticks and, you, and buttons this is only if you want it to be full on arcadey you can just resort to just using your PS3 so controllers so if, even your GameCube controllers, you got GameCube or PS3 controllers um, you can't afford to get this stuff, don't even worry about that stuff at the moment just have that as a board and have one of your controllers sitting there and there and you can just grab them off and start having a jam. But if you have decided to spend a bit of money and get your lights and that, uh, you've either got the cheaper version, which these ones here. Uh, of course you get different colours, these are your buttons and they click, make noise. Um, and of course they've got no lights. But these are your cheaper version and they come with the uh, plastic built joystick. Um, it's still a pretty robust build, but of course that's your cheaper option, you know, between 40 and 60 bucks, wherever you're buying it from. Um, whether these ones here, of course you've got the lights in them, uh, you're going to be paying, you know, for the whole kit with your, your things, um, everything on it, up to 100 bucks, just depending uh, where you're getting it from. You know, you could get that between 60 and 120 for all the gear, just depending where you're shopping, and depending on what you're buying. Uh, so anyway... We'll get into this quickly because as I say there's going to be some of you out there that the whole idea of this was to do it without cost. So if you've done it that way and you're just using your PS3 controllers, of course you could fast forward past this part with the buttons. I'm just going to quickly show everyone how to wire your buttons up properly. Um, so initially, if you've got them ones, the only thing you've got to worry about now is just hooking up. You'll see there's only two prongs. So you got your positive and your negative. You'll see there it's actually written on it. Positive over here, negative there. All right. So on the next thing you want to do, if you actually wanted to, you're unsure what side of these the connection is actually the lights. So what you want to do is get yourself a USB cord. Um, so as I say, if you're trying to make this without cost, this will be an old charging cord off a phone or etc. All right, what you want is your positive and your negative. And, of course, you want to work out which one is the one for the lights. So we'll just bring up the here, and we'll put it on positive and negative. All right, so we have the blue lights. And you'll see there, you'll see you've got one 
those first two they protrude out a wee bit the same as what i showed you on that other one that doesn't have the lighting so of course that's for your actual buttons uh, and of course this one here the one that goes right back without yeah no nodgy bit sticking out that's your one for your lighting right and then two ways of wiring your lighting up of course just using this usb and then you're just plugging it straight into the side of your laptop if your laptop doesn't have a usb port that it can use well you can just plug that into a charger phone charger and run all your lighting okay and this is also going to be the thing that powers the lighting on the joystick all right uh, next thing you want to do if you want to you can run a switch so you've got an on off switch for the lighting instead of them being on all the time every time your unit's on and where that's handy is for the likes if you're playing uh like your gamecube or ps3 games etc ps2 games and you're using the ps3 controllers and you want to just sit back on the couch you don't really want to be looking over top of the lights at the screen uh, it's okay when you're playing the arcade games because you're standing right above, above them so you're not getting any of the the lights on the screen itself but all right so that's what you're going to use to power them now to wire them up properly you can go through the painstaking event of putting joiners on each one and having a wire come out but of course initially you're going to have this one that plugs into your circuit into your circuit board all right and that's going to be for the people with the lighting or non-lighting. You've still got a circuit board that it plugs into. Uh, and then you want this on the positive and the negative of your actual plug. Remember to put your free actual switch. It goes on these ones that are protruding out. You see on the plastic there, it protrudes out a little bit. All right. And to make it a bit easier, when you're putting it in your game machine, what I've actually done, I actually have all of them lined up the same direction. You'll see there. So all the protruding outs I've got facing in first. So I know all the ones first, they were the ones for my button. All the buttons at the back, they are the ones for the lighting. Now for the lighting, of course the easiest way to do it, so you don't have to separately wire up each one, because it's going to take you a long time, buy yourself an actual light wiring harness. Now these are all linked together already. Okay, so you just be running all the way along one side. So you do all your positives, go up. And then you go through and do all your negatives, of course. But this is coloured all the same colour. So you want to put tape over the one that's the uh, positive, some red tape or something, so you know it's the positive line. And then the end of that is going to connect to your USB. Alright. And now if you do want amps even, so of course, you imagine if you ran positive all the way along here, along here, all the way to the end here, and then you did it with negative, these lights down here are going to be duller than these ones. Alright, because I've travelled right through and all the amps getting drawn. So to even that out, there's two ways you can wire it up. You can start your positive from here, coming all the way along, up, all the way, and then finish here. But your negative, start on this one, and bring your negative all the way through. Uh, that's one way of keeping them sort of steady. Uh, the other way to do it is with your wiring loom. Uh, you actually branch this along about halfway. So this here, the power would be put onto here, your positive. And then this one branching off in two directions is your positive for the green ones and the positive for your blue ones. And then you just stop at the end once you've got the, you know, and the same as your negative, do the same. Your negative one, you get it, you'll branch it off like that. That goes on your negative power. Um, and then, of course, that goes over to your negatives for your green. And this one here, negatives for your blue. And that'll be a way that you even it out so you're not losing uh, brightness in your buttons. And of course, at the same time, when this is all wired up, you are going to—you've got another one that plugs into here. Uh, if you can see over there, as we plug uh, the back over there, right there, that plugs in, and that's what powers your LED lights on that display there. All right, so I'll let you get back to it, uh, and then we'll get back to the rest of the video. Of course, that's for the so that's to cover you for the. Um, joysticks and everything anyway joystick cables <coughs> and for your circuit board here uh, for your buttons okay how we've designed them here okay is X square triangle circle okay so if that was your PlayStation controller uh, you'd be like that okay the reason I've designed them like this I was saying, giving you those designs, it's comfort. It works and great for button, putting your buttons. That's your R1 and your L1. So for when you're playing PSP or other games, 
that you need the six buttons okay so the order to wire into these normally first one will be x next one square next one's triangle next one circle um there is another way it goes as well but i'll give you that one for the time being uh then on the back here you actually see so of course that's kick three kick one two three four and then you got your l1 r1 so that's what you want to wire these ones up to l1 and r1 and then you'll see there you got start and you got select which here we're going start select and the select's also going to be the coin button uh, so initially if you've actually set this up and you're putting a coin image on it, that's where you plug your coin machine into. That's the select button. Alright, so we'll let you get back to that. Wired, finish all that wiring. And then we'll come back to the last part of it. Installing the laptop, putting the side bits in, putting the screen on. Alright, so after you got that wired up, so that's the USB cable that we've cut. Positive and negative going out. And of course, once you've wired that up, now yeah, you might not have a soldering iron. So once you've wound them up, make sure you've done them tightly joint together and put masking tape over them. Now, if you've got a soldering iron, put some solder on it and then mask and tape them up just so they don't short out. Alright, so that's all the wiring done. Uh, so all the lights and everything will go now. As I say, if you want a switch, that's where you have to put a switch, wire in a switch, wire it up to and put it somewhere on the machine. So you've got an on off switch for the light separately uh, but for this we're just going to have it going once the machine starts up the laptop right into the next thing right next thing we're going to be doing is installing the screen you know, if you're using glass you won't have to worry about this but if you're using perspex make sure to wrap uh take off the wrapping of the what, what part of it's the screen is going to be inside the machine take that off before you install it Alright, so we've got the screen in. Okay. But you see here, now we're going to get the laptop sorted out. Alright, so what you want to do is be sorting out your laptop inside here. Um, just going to take that screen out so you can see what I'm doing. But you'll see the edge over here. We've got a gap. Alright. So what you want to do is, once you've got this backed up to where you want to do it, you glue in a couple blocks to hold it in place. Alright. And then what we're going to do very now is cutting a strip of some uh, custom board or MDF board, anything you've got lying around, just to fill in that gap and just glue that in place. Because of course this is going to be glued up in place. Um, paint it black or whatever colour you need to have it. And plug your USBs in. And then you're ready to go. Time to turn it on. Start gaming. Well, not quite. You've got to watch my video on how to set up your uh, laptop to actually um, be an arcade machine. Well, and an everything machine. But basically, that's what she's going to be like. And just one quick thing too. If you are putting the joysticks in and you're doing the lighting one, for this light cable from your joystick, just wire this up to your power plug on one of your um, lights here on your button. Uh, if you do have problems with the lighting, not having enough amps, you, uh, the other option is you have to wire it up separate to a separate power supply. But then you're up for another power supply setup. So the easiest way around it is just to solder on to not here because that's your buttons. You want to go underneath. Alright, you'll see there I've soldered on already. Okay. Right, and of course, for this last part of the leg of getting it done, as I said, you've got the edging to do along here, okay, and along here. Now right, you'll notice the width not quite exact on this one, that's just because the USBs to have enough room on the other side so they're not getting squashed. Alright, so and the other thing you want to do, if you see down here, You'll see all the wiring and everything that's down there. Okay, we don't want everybody to be looking at all the wiring. Excuse the reflections. Um, so of course what you want to do is just have a board, the same thing, custom board going from there over to the screen. So this main screen, the glass or first fix, what are you putting in here? 
take that back out and now it's time to complete the hole and set in the inside and wherever your power button is uh, what you want to do is light, have everything lined up get the laptop glued in place and then you want to drill on an angle or even straight up and down towards wherever your power, uh, power button is alright and make a hole the same size as a bit of 8mm or 10mm dowel and then just shape a bit of dowel and then you'll glue that to the on off button of the machine and that'll be sticking up here or sticking up over there depending on where your on off button is on your machine alright this is going to save you having to pull back off each time to turn it off and on um, it's just easy to have a button up here uh, it's the easiest way to do it is to drill a hole, as I said, lined up with it, and then just glue the bit of dowel just to the top of the button, just with a bit of hot glue. Don't overdo it with super glue and that, because, you know, there might be a time you need to take this machine out. Um, so, right, the last leg of the journey, I'll quickly make up that piece for the bottom, take the screen out first, make the piece for the bottom, measure from there over to the laptop. Uh, you've got to measure over to here over to there to there make a flat piece and then from the flat piece you're coming up with your side pieces and then we're ready to show you it in action so and you can make that out of anything that you got lying around but a three mil in the air for anything even if you've got real thick cardboard if you're going to wrap it in carbon fiber or uh, carbon wrap vinyl or you're going to paint it or decorate it, it's not going to matter no one's you, you know no one else going to know what it's made of except you and if you're trying to make it without costing anything, well, as I say, you could just use some cardboard. Do the same thing and just decorate it up. Alright, so I mean, you're going to end up with something that's shaped like that. Oh, excuse how rough this is. If you want to do it in a whole piece. Uh, so you might have a wider segment on one side and a thinner one on the other, like I've got on my one. Or they might be completely even. And then what you do is right down the bottom here. You actually cut a wee slot in just a little bit um, yeah you don't have to do it much just a little slot there right at the bottom and another little slot there as thick as your saw blade um, and of course what you're going to do is you're going to have your other piece you're going to cut a flat piece and the flat piece is for the bottom bit so you're going to have a flat piece like that it's so thick as so we're covering all the wiring so no one you can't see the wiring that's going to go from the screen up to the thing that's going to be with the two sides are going in um, so what we can do here is just have a wee line here you cut on a wee bit and just cut on a wee bit there so what happens is when you slot that in these are going to all slot together all right um, so initially this is going to be the whole width so that's going to be going all the way from here to here um, so you may even find it's got a little wind um, you can make a little wind and out of it if you want but just come in the whip so that way oh sorry you'll be coming in the making a groove the whip as i say it'll lock in like a puzzle piece when you get it in anyway get that together get it back in the machine and uh then we'll turn it on